What's up, peers, and welcome back to the World Crypto Network, today continuing the reading of the Bitcoin Optech Group newsletter. Thank you very much to all the sponsors and, of course, the principals of this awesome open source organization. Today, newsletter number 41 on April 9th, 2019. This week's newsletter requests testing for release candidates of Bitcoin Core and LND, describes a discussion about UTXO snapshots for fast initial syncing of nodes, and provides regular coverage of BEC32 sending support and notable merges in popular Bitcoin infrastructure projects. Action items. Help test Bitcoin Core version 0.18 release candidate third. A three for the next major version of Bitcoin Core, which has been released. This may be the final test version, so we encourage organizations and expert users to test it promptly if they want to enable any possible regressions are caught before the release. Please use this issue for reporting feedback. Help test LND version 0.6 beta release candidate three. The first, second, and third release candidates for the next major version of LND were released this week. Testing by organizations and experienced Lightning Network users is encouraged to catch any regressions or serious problems that could affect users of the final release. Open a new issue if you have discovered any problems. News. Discussion about an assumed valid mechanism for UTXO snapshot. When Bitcoin Core developers are preparing a new major release, one developer selects the hash of a recent block on the best blockchain. Other well-known contributors check their personal node and ensure that the hash is indeed part of the best blockchain, and then add that hash to the software as the assume valid block. When new users start Bitcoin Core for the first time, the program then defaults to skipping the script evaluation in all the transactions, including in blocks before the assumed valid block. Jumping to the footnote of that. The assume valid mechanism is enabled by default, but it can be disabled by starting Bitcoin Core with the configuration parameter assume valid equals zero or no assume valid. This will allow your node to completely verify every transaction in that blockchain to ensure it, follow, uh, it follows all consensus rules. Note that this will have no effect on blocks your node has already processed. So if you want to verify scripts in old blocks, you will need to have this option enabled from the first time you ever use your node or you will need to restart Bitcoin Core one time with the reindex-chain state configuration option. For pruned nodes, reindexing requires redownloading all pruned blocks. Now jumping back into the newsletter. The program still keeps track of Bitcoin ownership changes produced by each transaction in a index called the unspent transaction output set. Although reviewing each historic ownership can still take time, simply skipping the script checking redundancies initial sync time for about 80% according to tests. Gregory Maxwell, who implemented the assume valid feature, has argued that, quote unquote, because the validity of the chain state is a simple objective fact, it is easy to review this setting. This week, James O'Byrne started a threat on the Bitcoin dev mailing list to talk uh, list about taking a hash of the UTXO set at a particular block, having multiple well-known contributors verify they gave uh, the same hash, and then having freshly installed Bitcoin Core nodes default to using the hash to download the exact same UTXO set. This would allow a newly started node to skip not only the script, but all blockchain data before the assume valid block, perhaps reducing the time requirements to start a new node today by roughly 95%
or more, and certainly more as the blockchain continues to grow. The verification of older blocks and transactions could then be done in the background after the user is already using their node, eventually giving them the same security as a user who disabled this feature. This is an old idea and is part of the motivation for research into other techniques such as fast, updatable UTXO commitments and atomic level DB backups. Discussion mainly revolved around whether or not this is a good idea. Arguments in favor of this included is making starting a new node much easier and that it does not seem to change the trust model for anyone who already trusts the peer-reviewed uh, of the development team. Arguments against it include a fear that the fast initial syncs with an assumed valid UTXO set would disguise the fact that block size increases make complete initial syncing from scratch much more expensive. If block size increases too much, it could become impossible for anyone or modest of modest means to ever trustlessly verify Bitcoin's UTXO state, forcing new users to trust existing users. Back 32 sending support. This is week four of 24. Until the second anniversary of the Segwit Soft Fork login on August 24, 2019, the Optag newsletter will contain this weekly section that provides information to help developers and organizations implement BEC32 sending support. The ability to pay native Segwit addresses. This does not require implementing Segwit yourself but it does allow the people you pay to access all of SegWit's multiple benefits. In last week's newsletter, we used the Python reference library for BEC32 to decode an address into a script pub key that you could pay. However, sometimes the user provides an address containing a typo. The code we suggest would detect the typo and ensure you did not pay a wrong address. But BEC32 is also able to help detect the location of the typos of your users. This week, we'll demonstrate the capability using the JavaScript sample code. The code is written using, using Node.js style module, including syntax. So the first step is to compile it into the code we can use in the browser. For that, we install the browser refi tool, sudo app install node browser refi lite. Then we compile it into a standalone file, uh, which is this code here, following by including it in our HTML with the script of back32 demo.js. For convenience, we've included that file on the web version of this newsletter, so you can follow. Uh, you can follow along with the rest of this example by simply opening the developer console in your web browser. Let's start by checking a valid address. Recall from last week that we provide the newsletter, the network identifier when checking an address, BC for Bitcoin mainnet. Uh, Segwit address ecc.check of a, uh, of a uh, back 32 address with the flag BC returns a error null and a program array of 20 with the values 117, 0, 118, and so on, version 0, which we can see here with the BC1Q, right here. We see above that just like last week, we get back the witness version and the witness program. The presence of the version field plus the lack of an error indicating that this program decoded without a checksum failure. Now we replace one character in the above address with a typo and try checking that, which then is the exact same uh, and I do not find the error here uh, quickly. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Well, seems like I cannot find it easily. <laughs> but we see that there is an error code invalid 
and the position array is 21. So this time we get back with the description of an error. The address is invalid because it does not match its checksum and a position. If we place the address above each other with each position marked, we can see that the 21 identifies the location of the specific error. And we see it's good uh, right here. And we see the typo right here, a four instead of a three. What if we make an additional replacement to the typo address and try again? Uh, so we have again here a address and we see that there is a position of the invalid code of 32 and 21. We get two locations. Once again, when we compare the addresses to each other, we see that this has identified both incorrect characters. Right here, the four and right here, the Y. Peter Woolley's interactive demo of this JavaScript code includes a few lines of additional code, um, view the source on the page to see that function that uses the position of that typo character, emphasize uh, them in red. We see right here. There is a limit to how many errors the check function can specifically identify. After that, it can still tell that an address contains an error, but it cannot identify where to look in the address for that error. In that case, it will still return the address as invalid, but it won't return the position details. So here with the segwit address ecc.check of a address with many errors, we see invalid, but the position null. In the case where there are other problems with the address, the error field will be set to a more descriptive message that may or may not include a position of the error. For example, this address <laughs> ends with YOLO <laughs> and it is an invalid character uh, and an array of 43. You can review the source code uh, for a complete list of errors. Although we spent a lot of time looking at errors in this mini tutorials, we have hopefully shown how easy it is to provide a nice interactive feedback to users entering back 32 addresses on a web-based platform. We encourage you to play around with the interactive demo to get an idea of what your users might see if you make use of the back 32 address feature. Notable code and documentation changes this week in Bitcoin Core, LND, C Lightning, Eclair, Lipsack P256 K1, and Bitcoin improvement proposals. Note that all merge, merges described for Bitcoin Core and LND are to their master development branches. Some may also be pack ported to their pending releases. This Bitcoin Core change updates the send many RPC to remove the min conf parameter, which did, did not function the way people expected. Now the wallet defaults are always used. Those defaults are not to spend outputs received from other people until they are confirmed and to optionally allow sending unconfirmed change outputs from yourself depending on the spend zero conf change configuration setting. This is the same way the more commonly used send to address RPC has always worked. This LND change changes how LND attempts to reconnect to all of its peers when coming back online. Previously, it attempted to open connections to all its persistent peers at once. Now it spreads the connectors over a 30 second window to reduce the peak memory usage by about 20%. This allows, this also means that messages that are sent on a regular interval, such as pings, do not happen at the same time for all the peers. This LND change implements a new gossiper subsystem, which puts its peers into two buckets active gossipers or passive gossiper. 
Active gossipers are peers communicating in the currently normal way of sharing all of their states with your note. Passive gossipers are peers from which you will only request specific updates. Because most active gossipers will be sending you the same updates as all other gossipers, having more than a few of them is a waste of your bandwidth. So this code will ensure that you get a default of three active gossipers and then put any other gossiper into a passive category. Uh, Mm -hmm. One second. Yeah. Furthermore, the new code will try to only request updates from one active gossiper at a time in round robin fashion to avoid syncing the same update from different nodes. In one test described in the pull request, this change reduces the amount of gossip data requested by 97.5%. This LND change implements code and RPCs that allow Lightning Network nodes to use static channel backups. This is based on the data loss protection protocol implemented in this Lightning Network daemon change to allow backing up of a single file containing all of your current channel states at any point and then enabling restoring them from that file at any later point to get your remote peer to help you close any of those challenge channels in their latest state, excluding unfinalized routed payment hash time lock contracts. Note, despite the static in this feature name, this is not like a hierarchical deterministic wallet one-time backup. It is a backup that needs to be done at least as often as each time you open a new channel. But that's much better than the current state where you may not be able to recover any funds from any of your current channels if you lose data. Further improvements to backup robustness are mentioned in this pull request's description. See the description of this Lightning Network change I uh, mentioned in newsletter 31 for details on how um, DLP, data loss protection based backups and recovery works. Getting this major improvement uh, to backups merged was one of the major goals for the upcoming Lightning Network version 0.6 beta. The, this BIP change withdraws BIP 51 at the request of its author, who has proposed an alternative scheme for the peer-to-peer -peer protocol encryption. And this BIP change signs BIP 127 to a specification for the proof of reserve tool described in newsletter 33. The draft text of the BIP is now merged. Peers, you gotta subscribe to the Bitcoin Optech newsletter to stay up to date with all the awesome things happening in Bitcoin. Thank you very much for joining me here today and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.